Hey, this is Argon. In this video, I'm going to share with you the best sales advice I ever heard. Now, when I came out of college and I started my career, I became a management consultant. And in the beginning, I really had a very, very difficult time selling. And the reason for that was because um, I was focused too much on myself. I was focused always in meetings on my own performance, how I was perceived by others, by my colleagues, by my boss, by other people in the room, whether or not what I was saying was making sense. And I was continually, there was this mental dialogue going on inside of my head, continually assessing myself, continually questioning whether or not I was doing a good job. And after a few months of no sales whatsoever, one of the more senior guys on the team took pity on me and he, he took me aside in a room and he said, Ago, let's have a chat. I'm going to give you a little piece of sales advice. And this is what he said to me. Ago, you're not nearly as important as you think you are. You're not nearly as important as you think you are. Now, I didn't say that to put me down or to kind of imply that I had a big ego or something. He said it because he felt that I was being, he saw, he perceived that I felt self-conscious and he, he was trying to give me the message that nobody was really paying a lot of attention to what I was doing. In the grand scheme of things, I really wasn't all that important. That helped me focus on the other, the other people in the room, the solution we were presenting. I completely forgot about how I was being perceived in presentations. I completely uh, stopped thinking about whether or not I was saying the right thing in meetings. Instead, I just focused on doing a great job, delivering good content, delivering good advice, and doing the best job that I could, but without questioning myself and my performance. My results transformed over the next months and years. And it's something that's always stuck with me. We are not nearly as important as we think we are. It's all about the other, it's not about us. And over the years, I discovered three ways in which to put that principle into practice, which I wanna share with you in this short video. Number one is practice better listening. I can't tell you how important listening is as a key skill in sales. It's probably the most important thing in sales today as well as it was yesterday, right? Great listening to me is about things like slowing down the conversation, taking the time for silence to happen and to occur and being comfortable with that. It's about things like um, genuinely being interested in the other person, not interrupting, letting them finish. But above all, it's about listening without intent listening without intent. Now, if you watched any of my other videos or read any of my blog posts, you've already heard me speak about this. Listening without intent to me is listening without trying to find those little clues that you can sell into, which is what virtually every seller today out there is doing. We're all, it's so tempting, right? To listen to these clues, things that buyers say, needs that we can solve and then jump in and say, you know what, let's talk about that. I have a solution for that. Listening without intent is not doing that. It's about refraining from doing that and holding yourself back and letting your buyer finish and tell the full story. So the number one way or one of the ways in which um, you can stop focusing on yourself so much and instead focusing on the other, which is a great, the best sales advice I ever had, is to listen better. Number one is to ask better questions. The French philosopher, mathematician, historian Voltaire once said, judge a man by his questions rather than his answers. And I remember many long corporate meetings where uh, over the space of one or two or even three hours in some cases, the most valuable moment occurred when someone asked an incisive great question. So I recently saw a list on, I think it was Fast Company, of um, what great questions look like and what great questions should accomplish. And there were things like great questions should empower. Great questions should challenge assumptions. Great questions should encourage breakthrough thinking. And great questions should um, cause the other person to stretch, to stretch their opinions, their mind, their beliefs. Those are all characteristics of great questions. And number three is to focus on the other not yourself. One of the early lessons of leadership that I learned is that being a leader isn't about you and it's not about taking the forefront or center stage at all. It's about your team. It's about your people. It's about the people that you work with and you work for. They don't work for you. You work for them. Now, this applies in leadership, but it applies just as much in sales. Sales really is uniquely a profession where your concern should be other people's concern. Your desire should be to help other people succeed, to help other people get what they want. The most successful sellers 
by far are primarily motivated by what makes their clients, their prospects, um, the people they interact with succeed, not their own personal agenda. And interestingly, if we do that, then uh, we find great things happening, right? People sense when we're really focused on their best interests, when we're really focused on meeting their objectives and helping them succeed in life and in business. So the best sales advice I ever heard was stop being so focused on yourself. It's not about you. You're not nearly as important as you think you are. The way to do that, practice better listening, ask better questions, and continue to focus on meeting the needs and the interests of the other, not yourself. As always, if you enjoy this video, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel um, for more sales tips, strategies, techniques for winning high-end complex B2B sales. This was Igo. As always, I look forward to seeing you on the next video.